Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with my favorite set-top box, the NVIDIA Shield TV, because they just pushed down the new Android M update and I wanted to give you all an idea as to what some of those changes are in there. Not a lot of big things that uh, most people will see logging into the device, but they did uh, update the SD card system. So you can now use SD cards as internal storage, especially on the 16 gigabyte model like the one I have here. There's also some changes to the menu system, which I'll show you as well. And a few other minor things that are more under the hood at the moment. So it now supports the new Vulkan API, uh, which I think will be significant later as more uh, games and other applications get written for that API. So in this video, we'll cover just kind of the things that you'll likely see uh, on your device when you update it. I should also mention in the interest of full disclosure that I purchased this NVIDIA Shield TV with my own funds. Uh, NVIDIA is not paying for this review. Uh, however, they have sent in the past some other Shield devices to the channel that are still here uh, that we use from time to time to cover you know, topics related to this. But nobody is paying for what you're about to see except for my Patreon supporters. And a viewer wrote in with that suggestion for the disclaimer, which I thought was uh, very good. So uh, that is what we always do on the channel is disclose our relationships. So let's take a look at the quick things first, and then we'll get into the SD card thing, which might take a little bit longer. So they've made a couple of changes to the menu here. So what we can do now is organize the menu. So I can hold down my uh, remote button here and uh, move uh, Cody around, for example, and it will stay in that spot after I save and exit. So in the past, what would happen would be that the apps would uh, order themselves based in the order in which you last ran them. Uh, now you can lock them into place as we just did there. You can also do it on your game menu here. So if I wanted to move uh, MAME over here or maybe uh, Pac-Man, move that up the line a little bit, I can move things around uh, pretty easily there and have them lock in and stay there. Another minor thing is that you can now hold down the back button on your remote or on your game controller to uh, put it to sleep, restart it, or power it off. Uh, my television actually has a, a little CEC command that it sends to the Shield automatically when I turn off the TV. It also puts the NVIDIA Shield to sleep, but uh, if yours doesn't do that, you can hold down the back button now, uh, get to that power menu any place that you are. And some of these other features are kind of minor, so we're not going to cover them here, but you can see a list of all that has changed uh, with this update. All right, I wanna talk about this internal storage thing because I thought it worked a certain way and I got through the entire video showing you how to do it and everything and then uh, things started not working the way I expected them to and I went on the GeForce uh, forums for the Shield and found a lot of other folks falling into the same pitfalls that I did. So I think it's going to be more instructive for me to talk about uh, what this is all about so you can decide whether or not to do it because it's very easy to set up the SD card on the Shield. However, it's not so easy to figure out exactly what it does to your Shield after you do it. So let's talk about this a little bit and then if you want to see the how-to I can maybe make a separate video. I'll put in some b-roll footage though so you can see how it works. So what happens is, is you can take your uh, little micro SD card here, plug it into your shield or even plug in an external USB 3.0 device like a really fast uh, SSD or a you know external hard drive or something and when you plug those one of those devices in uh, the shield's going to come up and say hey do you want to set this up as internal storage or do you want to leave it as removable storage now removable storage is exactly the way external storage has worked on android forever you can take files put them on the card pop the card out plug it into your computer and move the files back and forth internal storage is something totally different and what it does is it encrypts the card for your device and your device only. So if you pull this card out and plug it into a computer, the card won't read because it's encrypted and intertwined with your Shield TV device. It's not even tied to your Google account. So uh, if you ever had an issue where your Shield device failed and you sent it back for repair and they sent you back a different device, uh, the card's not gonna work anymore. The data's still fine on here, but you can't read it because it is encrypted and tied in uh, with the individual Shield device that it originally paired up with. So you need to come up with some way to back up your data from your Shield. They did say you can plug the Shield into your computer and pull the files off that way uh, because this card has to be in this Shield for it to be decrypted. And the reason they did this is because you can now move entire applications and all their supplementary data off your internal storage onto a card or onto an external hard drive and run it. Uh, and again, it's only gonna work on the device that set it up. So that could be useful because in the past, when you moved an app over to the Shield's external storage, uh, some of the supplementary data, I had a few games that were very small in size for their ap actual application, but uh, all of the supplementary stuff, like the graphics and the video footage and everything else that that game might need, uh, was all living on the internal storage. So you've seen this before, you install the game, and then all of a sudden it spends the next hour downloading more stuff because the Google Play Store has a limit to how big the applications are. 
car and that's how they get around it. So uh, this new thing allows you to move all of that stuff or even install all of that stuff onto external storage. And if you don't have a lot of room on your shield like this 16 gig one does, uh, having that might be a very attractive thing to do. Now what's cool is that uh, it does let you ex, uh, ex eject the uh, card or drive from your shield and the apps that you installed on there uh, just won't be available. They kind of disappear off your menu and then when you plug it back in, uh, they come back up. You can also move things from the card back to your internal storage and vice versa. So you have a lot of flexibility for moving things back and forth. The only problem is, is that uh, you can only pair up, at least on the Shield TV at the time that I'm recording this video, one of these external devices as a at a time as internal storage. So you can't have a bunch of these things and kind of swap them out like game cartridges. Uh, you can only pair up one at a time. Uh, and when that card is out or that drive is out, the app will be on the external device and not on the internal storage. So you need to think about whether or not that's going to be useful. And that's also useful for deciding how big of an external the storage device you should plug into it. Uh, you should also know that a lot of people are reporting that things are rather slow after they switched over to this external uh, storage model because a lot of these cards aren't all that fast. Even though you're at a class 10 card, if you watch my video about memory cards, class 10 uh, can mean a lot of different things. So you definitely want to buy the fastest possible uh, SD card you can get or get one of those new really cool super fast USB uh, 3.0 external SSDs that uh, will certainly give you enough throughput on the USB port to make it feel more like the native internal storage. Now the big gotcha here, and this is a really important thing, so listen carefully, uh, is that after you create and pair up that encrypted card, uh, the shield then asks you uh, to move some data over. And what is moving over is all of your data that you have for your apps. And the crazy thing is, is that the apps themselves stay on the internal storage. These are the apps you had installed before you started this encryption process. Uh, the apps stay on internal storage but the data moves over to the card. So I opened up MAME on my uh, device after I had ejected the card, just so I wanted to see what would happen, and it got all messed up. It couldn't find its data directory because it was looking on the card for that data, and I had ejected the card, uh, and although the app was still on the internal storage, the data wasn't, and it was gone. Other games did work, however, all the save game data didn't. It just uh, kind of started like from a fresh installation. So all the things that I had done in the game uh, were on the card and uh, not on the internal storage. And I really don't know how I'm going to take that data off of this card and put it back onto the main shield memory. I have to really dig into this now and try to figure that out. So uh, it's going to do some pretty permanent kind of stuff here and you really need to decide whether or not you want to take the step here. If you've got the 500 gigabyte uh, NVIDIA Shield, the Pro Edition, I wouldn't even bother doing this. You've got plenty of internal storage. I wouldn't touch it. Just leave everything as removable storage. You can still plug in external hard drives for your movie storage and everything else. Uh, there's simply no need on the 500 gig device, in my opinion, uh, to format the internal storage with your external devices. On the 16 gig one, it's kind of a toss up um, because it's certainly going to give you a lot more usable space. In fact, you can buy a cheap uh, one terabyte hard drive and pretty much get the same uh, functionality you would get out of the NVIDIA Pro device, but know that your data is going to get migrated over to uh, this external drive and you really can't ever take it out and still be able to access your save game data. So and just really be careful with it. I would probably uh, suggest that if you do this, move all your apps over after it's done copying its data over so that you can get uh, all your stuff in one place. But this is really confusing and I think if you don't need the space right now, leave everything as removable storage just to save yourself the headache of trying to figure out where your data ended up. And there's a lot of folks in the forums right now that are really confused and not sure where their data is. And I may even just start over again on my shield here because I don't know if I want to run off this slow card. So uh, really complicated stuff, uh, kind of dangerous on your data. So again, really think about it before uh, you pull the trigger on the SD card thing. I think it would work better if uh, the shield didn't copy the data over and gave you the choice as to where you want the data and the apps to be located. And I'm pretty sure that's how it works on the phones and on, on tablets. Uh, I think they're doing something different on here to migrate the data over, which they're not doing on other Android devices. So uh, just keep uh, that in mind before you do it. The good news is though, that if you had an existing external storage device, uh, the Shield will back it up before it reformats the drive for this new encrypted standard, and then it moves the data back over. So they did that right. 
Um, but uh, the other data movement thing is a little bit of concern to me. So I think you should definitely be careful about that. So uh, that's it on the Android M 6.0 update for the Shield. Uh, that internal storage card thing can be useful, but you really got to think about it uh, hard before you actually do it. If you have questions, leave them down below. I might do a follow-up video or I might write up an FAQ or just maybe direct you to the uh, GeForce forums where a lot of people are talking about this as well. But I would suggest, again, think about it hard and decide whether or not you want to do it and definitely back your data up to Google first so that if you decide to step back and uh, restore your device, you've got a recent copy to restore from so you can get back to where you started from. This is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.